today we're going to be doing a six month review on a 1987 Honda Super Magna V45 pretty much original except for minor upgrades which we'll talk about during the video so I'm going to do an intro thing now and we'll talk about the bike afterwards Alright, so to get into the review, I had a bit of a scare with this bike just there. Um, it felt like it wasn't fueling right, so I just stopped and filled it up, and hopefully it'll be okay. But straight into it, so ergonomics. In a word, this bike is middling ergonomically. It's, it is by no means a comfy bike, uh, particularly over distance. And let me get into why. So. The clocks, they're great, you know, you can see everything you could possibly want to see on them. The handlebars are comfortable, the switch gear is all comfortable, particularly for the year this bike was made. What's not great though, is the overall suspension. Now I've since upgraded it, which definitely made it better. I put on Hagon suspension, which made it a hell of a lot better. But originally it was it was pretty damn uncomfortable on the back. I thought originally that the rear suspension, the shocks, had actually collapsed, which was not the case. They were just really uncomfortable. But as for everything else about the bike, um, you know, I can see the gauge is fine. They're lovely. Speaking of which, I need to reset that. Done. You know, everything is nice and usable. The switch gear is all easy to reach, comfortable to use. So no no complaints there whatsoever. But long distance, oh god, the seat. The seat is my biggest complaint with this bike. It is the original seat, it is recovered. I don't know did they put new foam into it or whatever, but even if they did, it's still horrible. It's, it's not a comfortable seat. Um, what back support is there is in the wrong place and just pretty much not functional at all. So over long distance, you end up with like kind of the base of your spine gets beaten up by bumps so this is this is not a long distance bike uh, off the standard suspension package so continue on from ergonomics like the you this bike is equipped with mid controls I don't know what your opinion on mid controls is but these ones are actually pretty comfortable the only thing I would say is if not if what I am going to do with this bike over a longer term is put on some bars and highway pegs because it does affect your knees over time um, just having you know the mid controls you get kind of cramped up and it's just less comfortable so why not change them that's something I would definitely put on this bike is highway bars uh, in general particularly for this so what I'm doing right now you know going for a short blast around town or whatever this bike is perfectly comfortable just in the long term or not long term in long distance terms it's really not however we're now going to talk about power and this bike is plenty of it so power the engine package you have gives you 66 newton meters of torque at 7500 rpm with your peak power being around 80 horsepower at 9500 rpm that's delivered through a six-speed transmission or five-speed with overdrive um, through a shaft so it's shaft driven bike well it's not about how much power this bike has it's about how it delivers it and it's just such a punchy bike and I have to say, for a bike that was built in the 80s, the power that it has and the way it delivers that power is something a hell of a lot more modern. It's absolutely fantastic. It feels great. If I could get a more modern bike in the future like this, I would take one in a heartbeat. 
and a lot of that power profile is largely due to the fact this is a V4 a really really nice V4 so a lot of modern cruisers well, pretty much all modern cruisers are V-twins and even at the time the bikes this was mainly competing with were V-twins other than the V-Max and also the V65 which was also a Magna, just a, a bigger engine Magna so power on this bike I think is it's its golden ticket, it's, it's unreal, I love it I really 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 like how it handles I like how it delivers the power and I think it has plenty of power for the type of bike it is so handling wise, how does the bike handle? So to get into it straight away, this bike has a single brake disc on the front that's, that's stopped by a two-piston caliper, single, single, single two-piston caliper, single disc brake on the front. And on the back, it's a drum brake. So the front is 39 millimeter forks and the back has dual shocks. So how does this bike handle? Well, for the bike that it is, it weighs 240 kilos wet. So with me on it, it's over half a ton. Sorry, I just had to get away from terrible drivers there. So, where we were with handling. So how does this bike handle? For its size and weight, really, really good. Um, it's actually quite flickable, and it's very stable in the bends. Even with this kind of out there for big ass front wheel. The only thing that lets this bike down um, from a handling perspective is its braking system. So. I have added stainless steel brakes, stainless steel brake lines to this bike. I've added uh, brand new pads on the front uh, and brand new um, brake shoes for the drums. Very recently, there's videos on all of them except the pads because I did them when I bought the bike. And still, even with all those upgrades, the braking does leave quite a bit to be desired for me. I, I still think it's not it, do, it wouldn't inspire confidence you know if you were going into a corner cooking it wouldn't inspire confidence that it was going to get you out of it to be honest but i think that's more of a how the brakes feel issue to be honest they actually perform pretty all right it's just i don't know whatever it is about the way they feel they just don't inspire me with confidence so overall the handling, I suppose, is pretty good. Brakes do leave quite a bit to be desired, but the bike itself leans just fine. Um, it's nice and controllable in the corners. It's nice and controllable in most places, to be honest. Which is always nice with a big, heavy bike like this. Like here, even in traffic, absolutely fine, no issues. That brings us on to, I suppose, how usable, how practical this bike is. And it really isn't. <laughs> So when this bike first came out, you know, it was really a, a very different machine. What with its upswept exhausts um, and louvered side bands. But the, <clears throat> the big thing about the upswept exhaust was it made it very difficult for anyone to get any kind of side bags onto it, which actually resulted in no one getting side bags onto it. They just, there are none for it really. There's a few there, but they're kind of small and they're kind of crap. So unless you're willing to kind of go somewhere with a backpack on this bike so yeah unless you're willing to kind of go everywhere with a backpack this bike isn't really that practical but nobody cares um it's not why i have this bike so practicality it's not but like i said you don't care uh, you really really don't care it's not what the bike's for usability so where would i use this bike where do i use this bike i use it everywhere you know i've more recently just come back from a nice long trip on this bike and what I used was I had a magnetic tank bag which did the job just fine and I also wore my backpack I was able to carry more than enough clothes and my camera gear for an entire weekend uh, and, it, and it did fine where it does fall down in a usability point of view is its range it's fairly bad on fuel um, from a modern bikes point of view so this will get around about 180 kilometers um, 
out of it before it's really really low on fuel I mean you might have I think the time I let it go that far and get down that low I had about a half a litre of fuel left when I eventually stopped at the petrol station and that's not something you really want to be doing with um, bikes this old in case there's crap in the fuel tank so yeah from that point of view the only thing that would mark it down for for my usability points would be that it doesn't have great fuel range that's not a big deal either you know provided you manage that you're absolutely fine it's not a big deal just watch your fuel basically know how much you can get out of it so is this for the type of person who wants to have panniers and a top box on all the time no is this the type of person for the type of person who wants to be able to go 400 kilometers between filling up also no it's not, it's not going to happen for you but you know it's still very very usable i take this bike to work um, I do take it up and down to Kilkenny, which is around about a 400, 400 odd kilometer round trip. So let's talk about aesthetics on this bike. First things first, everything you'd be looking at when you're sitting on it. So I think the bars actually look quite nice. I like the shape, I like the design. I also kind of want to change them. But anyway, the clocks I really like. I don't think I'd ever change these for anything else in particular. There's nothing really that comes to mind that I'd like to put on instead of those original kind of retro clocks. Well, they're not retro because I suppose they're time appropriate, period appropriate for this bike. What else we have then? Obviously the full bike itself, the kind of centerpiece being the V4 engine, which I really like the look of. I love how it sits. I love how Honda built everything kind of around it. Other things that were kind of added for this model bike after the, the first gen Magna are the louvered side panels and also um, the upswept exhaust, solid disc back wheel which I'll show you in a second and a big 19 inch front wheel which kind of just made the bike stand out that little bit more. It also had a much lower seat height um, than the original. So that upswept exhaust and solid disc back wheel really I think just add to this that it's, it's a different bike to the original um, along with again that 19 inch front. Everything else about the bike is kind of standard enough, you know, you have your regular kind of classic single headlight unit and the engine, you know, it's finish is kind of normal enough. You have your fake air cooling fins because it is a liquid cooled bike. Um, do they do anything? They probably help a little bit, but all in all, these aren't doing a whole pile for you. Uh, other than that, I think not really much going on this bike these seats aren't original so aesthetically i can't really comment on them for the original bike they do look nice like that i do like them um but i'll probably change them again and i do prefer the black hagon shocks which also aren't original but i just prefer uh, a black shock back there i think it looks better as well so you know there's a couple of things i would change myself about this bike and probably will so stay tuned if you want to see them but aesthetically um i think this bike looks really good one thing i haven't mentioned the rear lights so those rear lights the kind of twin brake light unit wasn't on the the other bike and it wasn't on the third gen either and i really like the look of them it's actually been said to me by um a few people who've been behind me when i've been out on this bike that they really really like how those um twin brake light units work uh, work look <laughs> they also like how they function because it tell them when i'm slowing down yeah but anyway, um, so overall, yeah, really, really good looking bike in my opinion. Timeless design, um, timeless vintage bike. That brings us on to extras. <laughs> I'll give you one guess how many extras this bike has. <laughs> For, apart from your regular stuff, it does have a rev counter, which a, a lot of cruisery bikes don't have, and some people like having them. Some people are confused by, oh God, that's a nice crevice. Some people are confused by the lack of a um, rev counter when it's not there. The only other extra, I suppose, that you could call, uh, call it that anyway, on this bike was back in the day when this came out, <coughs> wouldn't have been that common on these type of bikes, was it has a hydraulic clutch, which is a little bit different. And I have to say, I do like it. It does make the clutch throw a lot nicer definitely prefer how it feels to a cable clutch but you know a cable clutch you can repair on the go they don't really break very often and if they do break it's not that serious you're not going to spew um, brake fluid everywhere or in this case clutch fluid the other thing that might be considered an extra 
is this bike is shaft driven, which obviously means that you have a lot less maintenance. I had a look at this, the, the, uh, I had a look at this bike's shaft <laughs> when I first got it, and it was pristine. I mean, absolutely nothing wrong with it. And if you watched my um, brake shoe replacement video that I did recently, you'll see that the splines, or the drive splines on the wheel, also look good and healthy. So, you know, no major concerns there. So in fairness, it really does last. It's, it's good that way. Make it again. Is this a bike that, you know, is gonna be for everyone? It's really, really not. This is an acquired taste of a bike. I always wanted one. I always wanted the V45 Magna. The V65, don't get me wrong, I think it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful bike as well. And you know, obviously it has also a really cool history with it, but this particular model year, the V45 750 V4 Super Magna, it just always had my attention as a, as a really cool bike. There's Black Rock Observatory. Cool old castle. Which is now an observatory. Observatory. Why am I saying that weird? I don't know. Something actually I'll talk about before the final thoughts on this bike is the cost. Could you buy one? You absolutely could. These are not expensive bikes. I paid less than two and a half thousand euro for this one. Um, and granted it needed a bit of work, but to get it up to a, a kind of a nice level, I have put in not so much. A couple of hundred euro, yep. But nothing bank breaking. The only thing is the V45 and the V65, they're both getting quite rare. They're not common bikes. So if you do want one, uh, I would pick one up fairly soon. Because these are the type of bike that will probably eventually become expensive. And my one is not for sale, nor will it ever be, unless I'm like dead or something. Whoever I leave it to, they might sell it. But I will not. So, final thoughts on this bike. Would I personally buy one? Oh, well I did. <laughs> so there you go. I think the more important question with this bike is, would I sell one? No, absolutely not. I mean, unless someone came and offered me a vast sum of money for this bike, and everything has its price, uh, particularly when, you know, you don't have that much money. But I can't envision myself selling this for any money that any would be anyone would be willing to offer. So, yeah, should you buy one? Absolutely. Like I said earlier in the video, these are going to be a collector's item. They're not yet, but they will be, eventually. Uh, we'll, sh we'll see how long that takes, but they'll definitely eventually be a collector's item. I would advise buying one personally, um, because I think they're awesome. And the history, I have a video coming on the history of the Magna soon. Is it a comfortable bike? It's really, really not. Um, it's not something I could recommend as being comfortable. Is it a cool bike? Yeah, aesthetically, you'd have seen the aesthetic piece I put into the video. Um, I think it's a beautiful bike. I think it's a timeless bike. I think it's just a classic. Power, unreal power. I love the V4. I love how it delivers power. Is it the fastest bike on the road? No, but it doesn't need to be. It's not its purpose, you know, it's not the point of it. And then, you know, your usability and practicality, no one cares. It's not what you get a bike like this for, you know. A cruiser is inherently not for that it's for just going out and cruising you know obviously you have your kind of tourery cruisers with their panniers and all their extra bits they're a practical bike you know you can commute on them and you can commute on this it's just a case of bringing a backpack like i've on me right now cost wise you can still get these um they're not that expensive when they do pop up it's more about the when and if they pop up that's kind of that's kind of what you're looking for so final thoughts on this i love this bike it's definitely the favorite bike, my favorite bike that I own personally. Doesn't need work, yeah. Like, I have the wrong grips on it. You know, this is kind of tatty. There's lots of tatty bits on it, but it's gonna all be done. And the cool thing about it is, I can ride it while I do stuff to it. You know, I've put on new Hagon shocks. I've redone the braking system, changed all the spark plugs. You know, done a few other bits and pieces to it. All just in the interest of keeping it running until such time as I can take it down and do a full kind of bl blow part of it and paint stuff. But 
for now it's absolutely perfect for my needs. So final final thoughts on this machine. I really like it. Oh and by the way it doesn't actually get as hot as the S1000 because I can kind of sit against it. But I really hope Honda bring these back for multiple reasons. Mainly because of the engine note off of V4. I think they're fantastic. I really really do. Um, but other than that that's about it. So if you've watched, thanks for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed making it. I love this bike. I happily make videos on it forever. Um, if you did enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. They help me out to make me feel nice about myself. When people dislike them, I kind of cry a lot. Sadly true. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy the flyby with this at the end. I know I've used it in a few vid videos, but I only have the one for now because it's the only one that I've had time to do. So until next time, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Adios. I probably should have mentioned, even though I said it's not as hot as the S1000 XR, it's still really goddamn hot. Don't touch the engine when it's just after stopping. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm gone now, really. <laughs>